if we consider a concrete house then the whole structure is supported by a meshwork of iron rods as if these iron rods are the skeleton of this house similarly for our cell there are inner meshwork of cytoskeletal elements which involves several kinds of cytoskeletal elements like actin based microfilaments intermediate filaments and microtubules which are made up of tubulin so in this video we'll be talking about the microtubule its properties its use and how it it helps in cellular physiology obviously we would look at in what are the physio physiological cases where microtubule dynamics is so important so stay tuned till the end of this video so microtubule dynamics is so important for a cell's normal physiology it is important for motility of cilia imagine our lung epithelium which is ciliated epithelium which need to beat its cilia because mobility of multiple substances so the cilia mobility is completely dependent upon microtubule dynamics imagine the neurons which are firing in your brain needs the vesicle to be transported at the end of the neurons to the synapses and that could only happen on top of a uh, microtubule track right so microtubule not only provides support to the neuron it also help in axonal transport the cell division where uh, we have our microtubules pulling the chromosomes towards uh, the pole and thereby the cell division can take place not only that sperm motility is also dependent upon microtubule uh, dynamics without the dynamic microtubule the sperm would be no longer motile imagine a neuron and you can see a par portion of that which is the axon of that and it has multiple microtubules which are like a tract on which it has molecular motors kinesins which take vesicles from one side of the neuron to the from the cell bodies to the synapses and that's how our neurons can fire and release the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft imagine a situation of inflammation where your neutrophils your monocytes need to squeeze themselves out of the blood vessel and reach the place of inf inflammation in that case this squeezing through the narrow capillary endothelia is not easy it is only possible because the cytoskeletal elements inside the uh, blood uh, in, inside these blood cells can be rearranged which would allow them to squeeze through now you can appreciate that at several aspects of general physiology and normal cell biology and normal functionality of the cell the microtubule dynamics is super important so let's just focus on the structure of the microtubule a little bit so microtubule is basically a necklace of alpha and beta tubulin dimer so the basic subunit of the whole microtubule is alpha and beta tubulin dimer before we get into the structure of alpha tubulin and beta tubulin we should understand that microtubule is nothing but a hollow rod and it can occur in several formats in several structures now the if we look at the details of it we can understand that alpha tubulin and beta tubulin are kind of linked to each other forming a single unit which would be polymerized to form this microtubule the alpha tubulin and beta tubulin is like a 55 kilodalton globular protein which has which is like pretty much conserved across the across all uh, species and all classes now this microtubule this microtubule cons uh, constituent which is like tubulin has gtp binding sites in the interface of alpha and beta tubulin this gtp is non hydrolyzable but whereas there is another gtp which is bound to the beta tubulin which is actually hydrolyzable now this hydrolyzing the gtp has consequences but whenever the beta tubulin is gtp bound it can add new subunits to the growing plus end of the microtubule and help the microtubule to polymerize but when the gtp is removed and hydrolyzed to gdp microtubule starts falling off microtubule starts depolymerizing so all these things hint us to one factor that there should be a critical concentration and people using 
microscopic technique with live imaging technique they found out if they track the microtubule length over time they found several times where the re the the length of the microtubule shrink dramatically and there are also events when the length of the microtubule is recovered so the event when the microtubule length is going down dramatically is known as catastrophe where the microtubule is poly depolymerizing rapidly whereas there is also a recovery phase followed by that and all these things tells us that microtubule polymerization and depolymerization is pretty dynamic though this structure provides us mechanical support this this structure provide the cell a mechanical support but these structures are dynamically instable rapidly polymerizing depolymerizing forming and breaking down that's what give the dynamics to the cell itself now there is a critical concentration beyond which there could be polymerization or depolymerization in an in vitro situation there could be a concentration let's say a critical concentration beyond which there would be polymerization of the microtubule and below that critical concentration microtubule would start falling off and depolymerize but inside a cell the situation is different because the tubulin dimer concentration inside the cell is way 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 high than the critical concentration of the polymerization and moreover there are factors inside the cell which aid in microtubule nucleation and help their polymerization with keeping all these things in mind it's easier inside the cell or an in vivo situation to polymerize the microtubule now inside the cell there is some organelle known as centrosome the centrosome has centriole and pericentriolar matrix in the pericentriolar matrix there are classes of protein which is known as gamma tubulin ring complex gamma tubulin ring complex is a super family of tubulin which helps in nucleation and help in polymerization of microtubule in simple words gamma tubulin ring complex works like an anchor holding it to the micro organizing center and helping it to be stabilized and polymerized now let's see what other factors on which microtubule stability depends on simply there are several microtubule associated proteins or known as maps which attach to the microtubule and also tau proteins which are re pr pretty significant in terms of alzheimer's disease all affect the microtubule dynamics and they help in microtubule stability itself but there are certain proteins like catenin and stathmin which help to sever the microtubule from the end and try to break down the microtubule so both kind of factors are present in the cells stabilizing and destabilizing factors in other videos we would look at what are the significance of having these opposing kind of factor inside a cell what are the clinical significance of that now for now if you like this video this is a very introductory video but if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you